We've had four gorgeous solar eruptions in less than three days, and another coronal hole rotates into the Earth strike zone, giving us yet more chance for some solar storming. Those stories and more in the news this week. The sun's activity is really picking up this week. We have a new region that's rotating into view off the east limb. It's already given us a prominence eruption, and it's now actively flaring, so we're keeping our eye on it. On top of that, we've had two mini solar storm eruptions that are now earthward and coming towards us. On top of that, we have a coronal hole that's now rotating into the Earth's strike zone. It's going to be sending us some fast wind soon, so this looks like it could be a very busy latter part of this week for solar storms, aurora, and ham radio issues. Switching to our M-Flare threat meter, you can see we've been extremely quiet over the past few weeks. We're barely popping anything over the B floor, and this has caused some problems for you amateur radio operators because we haven't had much solar flux to even support propagation. That is, until region 2638 showed up on the scene, you can now see it on the 22nd it popped a C4 class flare. It's not been eruptive. There's no solar storms sending off toward Earth yet, but we are watching this region and as it continues to be uh, an active flare player. It's not quite an M flare player yet, but we are definitely watching it. Switching to our solar storm conditions, you can see the last time we actually reached storm levels was back at the beginning of the month with that huge coronal hole that gave us some really fast wind. Since then, we've been hovering between active conditions and unsettled conditions kind of through the last three weeks or so. Even this last bit of fast wind didn't pump us up to storm levels. It just kind of kept us at active levels. But all of that is going to change here in the next few days as we get those mini solar storm hits plus this new dose of fast wind. So stay tuned. And the last two sets of solar storms for over this past month have brought gorgeous aurora views pretty much all over the world. We've seen it down under in Tasmania, and up north we've seen it in Sweden, and in Scotland, in Ireland, and Northumberland, in North Yorkshire, and views in Iceland. And if you move to the west, we've seen it in all over Canada. It was in New Brunswick and British Columbia, it was in Yellowknife, and gorgeous views in Saskatchewan, and of course all over central Alberta. We dip down into the United States, we've seen it in Maine, and Vermont, New Hampshire, North Wisconsin, and in Washington State. And a special shout out goes to some colleagues that managed to get a rocket launched in the aurora during one of these storms in Alaska. Way to go, Colby. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And the first thing you see is that big dark finger that's kind of stretching from the south pole on up, and it's rotating away from us. That is the big corona hole that gave us that huge solar storm at the beginning of the last month and gave us that beautiful aurora pretty much all over the world that I just finished showing you. Well, that corona hole is now beginning to rotate back into Earth view, which means in about 10 days or so, we will have yet another chance from some solar storming down top of the one that we're already about to have now. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit of that fast wind that should be coming very soon now. NOAA is expecting us to have about a 60% chance of a major storm at high latitudes, and this could be compounded by those mini solar storms that are also coming on top of this fast wind. So at mid-latitudes, we're expecting at least active conditions and uh, at least a 25% chance of a minor storm, and this again could be bumped up because of the uh, added effect of these minor or solar storms. These effects should continue all easily through the weekend uh, before things begin to settle back down. So you amateur radio operators are just going to have to hang on. And if the flares continue, then that actually will add even more noise to the ham bands. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have that new region that's rotated into the Earth view off of the east limb. This is region 2638, and it is firing flares. We just had a mid C class flare uh, within the last 24 hours, so we are watching it very closely. NOAA right now is giving us about a 5% chance of an M class flare, but they will likely up their numbers anywhere between 15 to maybe even 25%, uh, depending upon how quickly this region continues 
continues to grow. Meanwhile, you amateur radio operators enjoy a little extra added uh, solar flux due to this region. It should help propagation for a bit while this region transits the Earth-facing disk. The only unfortunate bit is that you might have to have a little bit of extra noise on the bands as this thing pops its little flares. So the space weather this week looks to be really exciting. We have that coronal hole that's rotated into the Earth strike zone and should be sending us some fast wind, along with a couple mini solar storms that were launched just within the last couple days, and the effect should be intensified. So we should be getting some decent storming starting around Thursday and possibly in through the weekend. So you amateur radio operators are going to have to kind of deal with it for a little bit. On top of that, within the next week we have yet another coronal hole that's kind of making its way just into the Earth. Uh, view right now and it will be causing some more storming starting in about a week to 10 days. So you amateur radio operators are going to get the brunt of it for easily the next two weeks. Now as far as your aurora photographers are concerned, get your shutter fingers ready because you're going to have easily two weeks of some decent aurora possibilities. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.